science and technology. And I'm Zachary Shock, your co-host, husband, and number one fan of Emily. That's me. Hi. So, what are we doing here today? We are going to learn about two things. One, what Steam? Isn't it that thing you buy games on? I was. I just thought you were gonna do like hot water, <laughs> and neither one is wrong. But. STEAM, in our instance, refers to, everyone knows what STEM is, science, technology, engineering, and math. Mm -hmm. All great and good. STEAM throws art in there because art's important. Yeah. It's basically math with sound or paint or what have you. Now, are we biased because we're both music majors? I choose not to answer that question. <laughs> That's fair. I still think it's important. <laughs> but, so what we're going to do here, Steampunks, is going to be a lovely history of all of the women in STEAM. Uh, you know, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. All right. I'm going to teach you. Teach? Well, that's kind of like school. <laughs> it, it Maybe explore? <laughs> no, no, that... Brings up bad connotations. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna explore women. Yeah, let's not. <laughs> Gross. Um, we are going to. I don't know. I don't think there's anything wrong with learning. Yeah, that's. Fair. I think learning's fun. So, who we are going to learn about today, dear Zachary, is Ada Lovelace. Lovelace, is that British? Yes. Awesome. Yes, it is. Born Augusta Ada Byron on December 10th, 1815 to her parents, Anne Isabella Noel Byron and Lord George Gordon Noel Byron. Interesting. Is yeah. that the Lord Byron? It is absolutely the Lord Byron. All right. <laughs> um, he was the one of the most famous romantic poets of his time. He was very much like a a boy band member in the 1800s. Were there four other there, Lord Byrons? No. But he, I don't know. He probably hung out with other poets. I don't know. It's not about him. <laughs> anyway, most flamboyant, huge, 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 huge mood swings all the time. A lot of experts think that he probably had bipolar that was super not, like, they didn't know. <laughs> they yeah, just they thought he was they didn't know much back then. No, they just thought he was crazy. Which, mm, um, well. <laughs> one good way to describe him was done by one of his former lovers, Lady Carolyn Lamb. He was mad, bad, and dangerous to know. None of those are good. Nope, those are all bad things. Uh, he wrote such poems as Don Juan and Childe Harold's Pilgrimage, mm. both quasi-autobiographical. So yeah, he was big ol' emotional romantic poet and he married Annabella that's what she was known as to her parents and friends and loved ones now is that like first and middle name or her full name was Anne Isabella uh. and so she shortened it to Annabella she was the only child of two very elderly parents not elderly but much older than they expected <laughs> to have their child <laughs> Nice. And she was about as the opposite of Lord Byron as you can get. Super prim and proper, super religious, loved mathematics. Byron dubbed her the princess of parallelograms, which is pretty cute. <laughs> and um, classic story of she tried to fix him. Mm, never mm -mm. goes well. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Don't do it. Didn't, didn't fix him. <laughs> <laughs> when, Usually not. Uh, when Ada was only a month old, Byron left. He went to Greece 
and Annabella took Ada and went to her parents' house, and they never saw each other again. Ada never saw her, her dad after that. Does does anybody know what happened? Yeah, he was oh. he, he was in Greece. He was just hanging about, being in Greece. He did all kinds of stuff over there that we don't care about right now. That's a little greasy. <laughs> anyway, so Annabella and little baby Ada were living at her parents' house, and she was so terrified of her daughter becoming like her husband that she pretty much forbade any imagination ever Oof. yeah <laughs> so super fun childhood for ada here's a i got a typical schedule for eight-year-old ada for schooling and it was music at 10 french reading at 11 15 arithmetic at 11 30 work like homework at 1 30 music at 3 15 again and french exercise at 4 30. A lot of music in French. Yes. And a little bit of arithmetic, a little hint there at the future. Of um, course. Useful. <laughs> the thing is that her mom raised her but wasn't really the one doing it for yeah. a long time. She was off at different health spas and helping other children get education and just sort of left her with her parents and made sure she didn't imagine things. I prefer, I don't want to fall into this hole. A lot of people sort of vilify Annabella like, oh, she never let her imagine anything. But she did pretty well as a single mother. She mm. cared a lot about her daughter. She just maybe wasn't. Yeah, it was coming from a good place, but maybe... A little, little, little far. <laughs> yeah. But of course, as you can imagine, <laughs> it didn't really work. <laughs> Imaginer's gonna imagine. <laughs> and when Ada was 12... She started creating a new type of science to build steam-powered wings for her and her horses. So you can just invent a science. Yes, she called it flyology. <laughs> I hope it really took off. Bum, bum, ba -da. I think that's uh, trademarked. Well, shoot. <laughs> I can't afford that. <laughs> so, uh, flyology. Flyology. Um, she, you know, got super into it. Plans all over her bedroom floor about, you know, how much, how big the wings are going to have to be compared to the horse or the person. What horse? Yes, she wanted her horse to fly. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, she was. She it was, you know, as far as a twelve-year-old with no technical experience could get, she had some pretty smart ideas. You know, this was. A while before people could fly. Yeah. <laughs> and she was going to do it with her horse, and it would have been magnificent had her mom not put a stop to it pretty quickly. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you That's know? A little imaginative. A little bit. And uh, really ramped up the uh, math and real science factor after that to show yeah. her, you know, how actual scientists do it. And that was pretty easy to shove down her throat because... She was, Ada was sick a lot as a kid. Mm. Um, measles, polio, they didn't have vaccines yet. So. Is she the one that made the vaccines? She did not make the vaccines. <sighs> as cool as that would have been. Yeah. <laughs> but um, from ages 13 to 16, she was completely bedridden, unable to move. So a lot of studying got done then. Mm. <laughs> also cuddled with her cat, whose name was Puff. Now that would absolutely bring me to do some work afterwards. Be being with, paralyzed? With, no, with a cat. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's different. <laughs> also, on top of all of the studying and cat cuddling, there was also a lot of opium. Not like a lot. Like but, enough for like a kid. Like a poppy field just next door, maybe? No, they, it was given to her as, oh. as drugs. Uh, pretty much her whole life, and we'll get to it later, how that doesn't end so great. Well, that might explain why she wants a flying horse. <laughs> she saw it in a dream, in an opium dream. She got her strength back around 16, 17. She was able to walk again, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. And that was when she started getting ready to enter society. It was Britain. It was... 
the 19th she, century. Yeah, she was a daughter of a lord. Yeah, she was ready to go and learn all her proper manners and how to get a husband. Yay. Was it like frozen? Like she finally got to open up the doors? No. Oh. <laughs> so she had a group of governesses at this point that were assigned by her mother. They were old biddies who just wanted her to do math and be pretty for a husband. She called them the Furies. <laughs> Good. <laughs> they, really like her. they were super fun. And, you know, fell, into, fell in love with one of her tutors and ran away with him and tried to get married at 18. Oops. It didn't go great. Not back then. Mm -mm, nope. Rewind. Didn't work. Uh, they covered it up pretty well. No one knew until, you know, oh. later. Um, Impressive. But... That was when it was time, like, okay, time to put you in society, get you a man that can calm you down, oh, take yeah. care of you. Not great, folks. Womp. And she did eventually meet a husband. His name was William, 8th Baron King. He became Lady King on July 8th, 1835. Could she... Did she call herself Queen, please? <laughs> no, that's how you get murdered. No, oh, That's fair. how you get assassinated. Uh, they had three children, Byron, Annabella, and Ralph Gordon. And she was actually descended from a now defunct line of barons, mm. Lovelace. And her husband was given the title Earl of Lovelace in 1838, which made her Lady Lovelace. Mm. So that's pretty much all about her personal life. Okay. Let's talk about her science life. Yeah. Bop, bop, bop. Bow. No. I'm hilarious and you know it. So we've learned about her personal life. More or less. Quick overview. That's not why we're here. We are here to learn about... Science? Technology. So, learning the mystery? <laughs> I, I haven't watched the show. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Uh, do you know why Ada Lovelace is important in the history of STEAM? She wanted flying horses. Yep. <laughs> Powered by steam, even. There we go. I think that's uh, two for two. Uh, Come on, I know you know the answer. Uh, she was the first computer programmer? She was. The very first of any and all genders. Um, I know you're saying there was something that was more hypothetical. It was. We'll get there. Yeah. So, Ada was introduced into society. And part of that was introducing her to new and very prolific tutors and mm. friends. Um, she was friends with Michael Faraday and Charles Dickens, for one thing. Again, we were talking about this earlier, but all connected. All in 1815, connected. Or whatever year. That was when she was born. <laughs> yeah, but they they all know each other. They all know each other. Uh, go ahead and, 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 and teach about the, the cool thing you learned while we were on our break. Uh, I had thought I'd remembered, uh, a, something about Lord Byron more than, uh, the Ada Lovelace connection. Uh, it was that, uh, actually the author of Frankenstein, uh, Mary Shelley. Mary Shelley. Uh, and him and a couple of other famous poets, uh, actually got together and, uh, had a poet party, uh, I want to go to a poet party. Yeah, uh, from the sounds of it, it was a pretty, actually, crazy party. <laughs> so, poets know how to party it up. But yeah, during that party was when Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein. Wow. Maybe we'll get to her in, in another episode. I probably will. Anyway, so, one of her tutors uh, was named Mary Somerville. And Mary was pretty cool in her own right. She was a very famous, at the time, and I guess now, astronomer. Okay. She was actually the first, well, one of the first female members of the Royal Astronomical Society. I say mm. one of the first because it was at the same time as, like, another woman. Yeah. But that's still pretty cool. Yeah, that sounds like an awesome thing to be a part of. Yeah, and a super cool tutor to have, too. Yeah. <laughs> but they were also really close friends and went to parties together a lot. <laughs> Um, and one of these parties was held by none other than Charles Babbage. Wow. Charles 
Oh God, it's so cool. Now you know I know him, but for our audience, how about you? Uh, I know he's your favorite he, of all the people that you know a lot about. Yeah, he's like my favorite, favorite? Uh, newspaper writer. No, not even a little bit close. <laughs> Charles Babbage was a mathematician, philosopher, inventor, and mechanical engineer. Okay. Yeah. He was also a party boy. He had to have written, like, at least one article. Probably at some point. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Charles Babbage is pretty important to the history of the computer, too. Considering he came up with the first one. All right. Important part. <laughs> this still seems a little early for actual computers. It was more of a... The very first one, the difference engine. It was a mechanical calculator of sorts. We'll get there. Hold on. Hold on. So, at this party they went to, it was Charles Babbage's party, and it was Mary Somerville, Ada, and her mother. Roaring party. Well, there were others there, too. <laughs> like, people such as Charles Dickens, Michael Faraday, and various other philosophers and mathematicians of the time. All right. It, it was, like, the place to be in London society if you cared about anything mental, educational. Thought-provoking. Thought, like, uh... There's Arguments. A, there's a word I'm trying to think of, and it's not working. Anyway, so at this party, he had several things on display to show off his work. And two of those things were a silver ballerina that was like an automaton that people were amazed by. She was gorgeous. Just danced around, steam-powered, very steampunk. No. That's the name of our show, though, Zach. It's very good. Now, is this thing like an actual robot? Yeah, it was more like a like a like a tinker toy, kinda. Mm -hmm. At the time, very super impressive. Yeah. To us, more like a little bobble. Nah. It might have been. I don't know how big it was, but um. So he had the silver lady, and he had the difference engine, like that thing I talked about earlier. So I'm gonna explain how this thing worked. I'm gonna admit. Early computing is way more focused on levels of math higher than I will ever be interested <laughs> in figuring out. I'll read this. I still don't even fully understand how. I'm a web developer. Computers... I make calzones, folks, so I hope you enjoy. Computers already do the math for me, so I don't have to know these things. But <laughs> this is from the book Ada Lovelace, Computer Programmer and Mathematician by Avery Elizabeth Hurt, and I thought it was the best description. All right, here we go. It looks something like this. Imagine a cylinder that rotates like a carousel, except in place of horses, there are 10 numbers, zero through nine. Okay. Now imagine several of these cylinders stacked on top of one another, revolving independently around a column in the center. So, so like, like on uh, the Da Vinci Code, that little... Kind of like that, thingy. but a bunch of them. All right. And each cylinder in the stack is encircled by a narrow band of teeth, so gears, that enabled it to be turned by a crank or other gears in the system. Now, imagine that there are several of these columns of cylinders in a row, all connected by rods and gears. And by adjusting each cylinder in a stack to a given number, because you have like the 10 numbers, mm -hmm. so, and a large number can be entered into the difference engine, and then you put a second number in the second one, and the third one, and the next over, all that, you turn the crank, and it adds them together. Okay, so... so the final row, your result is going to be the sum of all the numbers. Interesting. Crank-powered, then. Crank-powered, yes. Yeah. Very... At our standards, rudimentary. At their standards, holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> like, these people, like, were taking art yes. paintings right there and then. Like, it was crazy impressive. At, at the time, calculations for star charts or for mortgages, or for anything, were mm -hmm. done by hand by people called computers. So there was Interest. a huge margin of error, because humans make mistakes all the time. So he came up with this to try and solve that possibility. Now, at this party, people were amazed by the beauty of the Silver Lady, and in awe of the power of the Difference Engine. Except for Ada, who saw beauty in the difference engine. She just got yeah. it. Like, she saw it and she was like, oh, cool, that thing adds numbers. Wow. 
Now I can fly my horse. <laughs> now I know how. Now I can calculate horse flying. <laughs> and so she was just immediately like drawn to all the things it could do. Uh, one of one of the biggest things about Ada Lovelace is that she realized before anyone else how much these computers could affect our day to day lives. You know, everyone else saw it as like, oh, cool, now businesses can do numbers better. Mm -hmm. And she was like, it could, comp well, not this one in particular, there's a second machine coming, but it could compose music because music's just a bunch of rules that you can put. So, mm -hmm. oh, she was just so creative and great. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> so she started correspondence with Babbage after this, after this party, and mm -hmm. they wrote letters back and forth forever. <laughs> just any love letters? Not love letters, no. no. He was old. He was 42 by the time she met him, and she was six, 17. Wasn't that normal back then? It was normal back then, but she got <laughs> married to, to to King. All right, yeah, And yeah. Uh, they, were, they were happy, happy. as the marriages can go back then. Uh, but in, in their correspondence, Babbage started imagining his second machine, which would be the analytical engine. This one could do it all. Different engine could add. The, the differences. Y yeah. Analytical engine would have been able to add, subtract, multiply, divide, all that stuff. So again, closer to the uh, scientific calculator. Yeah, more, more functionality, definitely. Mm -hmm. And he also wanted to take out even more human error. You know, in the difference engine, someone is putting one million eight hundred fifty-two thousand, whatever, so he could still mess it up while putting it into the machine. Yes. So he was inspired by something called a Jacquard loom which Ada was also obsessed with. She saw one as a kid when she went on a, a factory tour with her mom. It was the Industrial Revolution. That's what she did. Yeah. She went to factory tours. <laughs> look at these rotating things. Wow, Ooh. look at all this stuff we can build. <laughs> so the Jacquard loom is a loom. It makes rugs. And it was controlled by punch cards. So they would create these cards, and depending on where it was punched, it'd be like, okay, a line of red, and then a line of blue and half this and half that and so he was inspired by that to take the human error out of it because you could double check the cards before you put it in yeah tell it what to do and you know way later when computers existed that's how they were originally programmed so it carried on mm -hmm. this one was a little harder to make real difference engine he was building and he had grants and such from the government and it wasn't going super great Ooh. Uh, gears have to be very finely tuned. You have to have people who are skilled enough to finely tune the things. Sometimes they steal everything and leave. No. And then it's harder to get more money from the government when you're like, hey. Hey, I got stolen from. Give me some more money. Please give me more so other people can take it. I'm responsible. <clears throat> so, you know, they were like, we're not going to give you money for a new engine. You can't even finish the first one. So he was going around everywhere trying to drum up support for this new analytical engine. And Ada's helping him along the way with, with planning and such through their correspondence. So in 1840, he went to a conference of Italian scientists to present a paper on the analytical engine. Mm -hmm. Get support. And at this conference, engineer Luigi Federico Menabrea, he published a paper in French two years later in 1842. Was French the official science language back then, I or just... so. It is odd that an Italian man <laughs> wrote it in French. That's a good question. Put that on the list to Google later. So, he wrote it in French, 1842, published it. They wanted to show it off in Britain, but it was in French. What are they going to do? Wait a minute. Who studied French religiously pretty much all day, every day, since the time she was a baby? Joan of Arc. Yep, Joan of Arc showed up. <laughs> no, it was Ada. It was Ada Lovelace. Oh, yeah, with that music. and yeah. mm. I'm mad at you. <laughs> anyway, they asked Ada to make an English translation for British journals. And Babbage encouraged her to add her own notes because he knew that other than him, there was no one in the world that knew the intricacies and possibilities of this machine like Ada did. Mm -hmm. So she got to work. And by the time she was done, her translation and notes were three times longer than the original paper. She had wow. <laughs> she had seven sections, A through G. A through F sort of went through, you know, it could, how it was different from the difference engine, why it was worth it to fund this, mm -hmm. even though the difference engine was already a thing. Um, it could, you know, add more, it, it, could, it could do the different 
stuff we were talking about, the multiply divide, it had punch cards for both variables and instructions. Variables were possible now because yeah. it was basically memory on the cards. Yeah, variables are pretty important for computers. <laughs> Super big for computers is like how they work. And this is where she theorized a lot about the things that computers could do in the future. We compose music of any degree of complexity or extent or be used for amusements or games. She predicted video games <laughs> in the 1800s. <laughs> and then note G. Ooh, da 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 note G. The world's first computer program! You know, can, can I can I play it on my Windows? You know, I'm sure someone somewhere has <laughs> put this on us. No, but um, she wrote an algorithm that, with the use of punch cards, the analytical engine would be able to calculate the Bernoulli numbers. Now, the Bernoulli numbers are one of those high-level math things that I never even learned about, but I looked it up, and they are a sequence of signed rational numbers that can be defined by the exponential generating function x over e to the power of x minus 1 equals the summation from n to infinity of b sub n times x to the power of n over n factorial. Now that is cool, but <laughs> how is that cool? I don't know. All uh -huh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's used a lot in high-level math All for right. very important things. I don't understand it. I just make web pages look pretty. <laughs> but that's crazy. She was able to take that that function that I can barely I don't even know if I read it right. I asked my brother <laughs> if that's how it was done. And the thing about this program, purely hypothetical. Mm. The analytical engine didn't exist in the real space. Yeah. And that no one built it yet. So she wrote this out, debugged it, figured it out. People have since taken it and put it into a quote-unquote analytical engine, it would have worked perfectly. Hmm. It was 100% accurate. And she just wrote it with like a quill or something. <laughs> you, you, can, you can find the notes and it's just a giant table with a bunch of, of equations in it and showing, you know, put, put this card to do this, blah, 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 and it's crazy. Wow. Like, completely in her own head, mm -hmm. came up with the first computer program. Yeah, I had trouble even trying to make a one with instructions. With folks. instructions. Many people, as you can guess, tried to claim that Babbage wrote it and Ada just helped. I don't want to ignore these people, but in all of the papers that I could find that claimed that, the strongest their evidence got was, well, because it would have been weird for a woman to do it back then. Okay. Cool. Mm -mm. No, she did it, guys. Good, good argument. <laughs> Calm down. She wrote it. Live with it. She was awesome. Uh, unfortunately, womp womp. After this, her and Babbage had a bit of a falling out. Mm -hmm. He he was not super good with money or you know asking people nicely for money. Mm -hmm. And so she she wanted to take over that part of the project for him. You know, she was very li well-liked and, mm -hmm. you know, as a woman was more prim and proper about it, but he was like, no, this is mine, and blah, 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 blah. They fought about it. Mm -hmm. Never really talked again after that. And as such, it was really the only scientific breakthrough she had. Okay. Which is sad. Yeah. She tried some stuff later, mainly having to do with gambling on horses. <laughs> Flying, please. No, nope, just normal running ah. horses. Uh, her later years were filled with a lot of gambling debts because mm. she was very good at math, so I can see where she would think she could hack the system. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, horses are a little unpredictable. Yeah, so... Uh, she made the variable. She knows this. <laughs> but, you know, uh, later, later years were filled with sickness, more opium, mm. and eventually uterine cancer which did take her uh, when she was 36 on November 27th, 1852. But her mother was at her side. So, you know, life happens. Yeah, it's but a circle of life. But... There you go. The first computer programmer was a woman in the 1800s. Yeah, pro you could ask anybody and they would place money that 
it was not even kind of that. No, they probably guessed some, like, guy in the 40s. 19, 19, 1962. 19 and 99. But, yeah, there you go. Ada Lovelace, the first computer programmer. And my personal hero. I'm sure she does a lot for your job. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to do it for this very first episode of Steampunks. Please follow us on Twitter at SteampunksPod. And uh, thanks to the Crips for the use of our song, uh, Marie Curie, as our intro and outro. And until next time, keep flying, you beautiful steam-powered horses. Bye! Bye! Bye.